Okay. So like, I don't see the benefit on the greenhouse gases side. So like, firstly, as we know, plants store carbon dioxide. Um, so in burning them, you're admitting greenhouse gases. Secondly, turning seed to crop is actually very energy intensive. Um, so a recent study found that producing enough biodiesel to equate to one gallon of, gallon of petroleum um, based fuel actually takes several gallons of petroleum fuel to produce in the first place. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it doesn't actually yeah. make sense because the growing the crop to get it to the point you can even use it as a fuel uses fuel in itself. Um, so like think about even like not even just like fuel, so like think about like the fertilizers, um, pesticides, herbicides, machinery, like the transport, um, even like to places that can't grow biofuel. So like, what would you do um, in like countries that aren't able to grow that? You have to transport it there. Like corn, ethyl corn ethanol alone, like takes up 30% more energy to grow than it generates as a fuel. So I just feel like at the end of the day, there might be a net increase in GHG emissions. Mm -hmm. um, speaking to that point, I think in terms of using biofuels, I don't think they should necessarily, I think the most sustainable way moving forward to use them is probably to actually use them to generate electricity rather than to solely, you know, for cars and stuff like that. Like, yeah, that is one option, but if you're using them to generate electricity, that is a lot more of a, um, like the one you like centralize power, right? Like you can do it a lot more efficiently and then you can have carbon capture and then that carbon capture you can then use to like, um, for instance, like they have um, around like certain biofuel uh, plants, they have like greenhouses and stuff like that. So they, they then turn that, put the carbon dioxide is given up into those greenhouses to help grow plants within those greenhouses. So yeah, I, I, I don't think biofuels are the way to completely eradicate greenhouse gases. I would probably agree with that point um, to a certain extent. But I think they're a way to decrease reliance on fossil fuels because they're especially, I think, we're right now we're not in a, in a situation where we can get away from fuels, right? Like we still need cars, we still need, um, we're not, like our infrastructure doesn't permit electric vehicles yet. So if biofuels are, I just think, as of right now, a really good way to get rid of our fossil fuel reliance. I think about, for instance, Brazil, where there are huge stores of biofuels for their sugarcane plantations. Um, and so I think about um, their president and how biofuels almost become kind of a justification for tearing down um, grasslands and forests and things like that. And I worry that if we embrace biofuels, as a main fuel source for fuel as opposed to um, petroleum that it would be a catalyst for political leaders to tear down forests and grasslands in the future and weaken the protection of those spaces biofuels are kind of like like well you know when you think of like to me when you think of any renewable energy they're very region specific so like solar in one place works really well or you know, wind in one place works really well. I think to me, because biofuels aren't necessarily just um, based off of agricultural feedstocks. They can also be based off of algae. They can be based off of forestry byproducts. They don't have to be just like so. In that sense, you don't necessarily have to be you know cutting down the rainforest. You don't have to be um, using up like land that's being used to grow like actual food products. You can use so, for instance, in Canada. I know in, um, in like Ontario and BC, they have a lot of like lumbering and um, wood cutting, et cetera, stuff like that. So in those places, they have a lot of like byproducts from that lumbering. So there's like leftover um, sawdust and wood chips and like, you know, twigs and stuff that not, aren't necessarily being used from the, from the lumbering process, basically. That can then be turned into biofuels. And then also some places, I think agriculture, um, is relevant for biofuels. So some places, you know, like as we get more like GMOs, I know GMOs aren't um, super loved by everyone, but you know, GMOs, et cetera, like there's some places where now we're actually having too much, not too much crops grown, but like there's too much, too much like byproducts left over. So like, like you have like a thing, like a huge thing of corn and there's like corn husk left over and stuff like that, that you could either put that in a landfill 
to like I know some of it can be returned to the ground to then you know replace the nutrients etc but not all of it necessarily needs to be. One other um, environmental factor that worries me in terms of biofuels is the amount of water that it takes to grow the crop whether it's algae um, even if you're using animal waste it took a significant amount of water to raise that animal um, so in any form biofuel can be kind of water intensive and I worry that with a fresh water shortage already being on the horizon, is it the most intelligent way to use our water resources? I would definitely say, like, I agree. If you're growing crops for specifically for biofuels, I would say then, yeah, um, it, it, it probably is water intensive. I'm not going to disagree with that. However, like if we're using like especially like animal waste or kind of like lumbering byproducts, like those animals aren't being raised for biofuel, right? Like the animal waste is just a byproduct. And then also like another thing that, another form of feedstock um, for biofuels is like human waste. Um, it's not really done so much, but that is something that can be looked into a little bit more. And then human waste in terms human of- waste. Like, or biofuel? Oh, yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> human waste is like that. There have been studies looking into like actual human human waste, meaning like genuine like excrement, like that sort of stuff. But then also like actually just like you know like um, waste as in like cooking oils, etc. Like mm -hmm. those can also be turned into biofuels. So I think in the instance that we're growing crops specifically for biofuels, yes, that that would be water intensive but i think a lot of biofuels that aren't first generation are focused a lot more along using like feedstocks that are byproducts of something that's already taken place so kind of like i said like it's using like agricultural byproducts it's using stuff from forestry that isn't it's just going to go into a landfill right and then from that landfill in itself is going to have its own emissions as it decomposes right so like I think if you if you're thinking of biofuels that are made in that way, I would say they're not water intensive. So my first thing I would think about is that if we hit biofuel targets and expectations, that it will drive up food prices and foster food insecurity problems. Um, from what my understanding is, that one in seven households in Middlesex, so where we did our masters, are food insecure, yeah. and while I recognize that a big part of it is a food distribution problem, um, is it fair to use all this land up for biofuel when people in our own communities go hungry? I think that, you know, if you are in, so like you said, if you're in Middlesex right now, and one in seven households are food insecure, you should not be getting biofuel from agriculture. You, in my opinion, you, you know what I mean? Like, as I said a little bit, a couple times now like it's a region specific thing so i think if you if you're in an area like that then you, i just don't see how you can be you know converting your fields into purely like i don't know what an instance like switch grass or cane grass or sugar cane like things that don't even produce food right like um but if you be like going back to the byproducts thing like so if you if you're growing corn or something like that right and you're in Middlesex or anywhere and that you're not turning that corn into a biofuel you're just kind of using like the leftover you know like the dead plant that isn't going to be used for anything else I don't really see how that necessarily would be playing into um like food security, just because that's not necessarily diverting food away, right? Um, that kind of leads me into my next point, is that I worry about, or I think about people who work out in the oil field, how many Canadians right now are employed working in Alberta um, and doing, or even in logging, agriculture, things like that. These people are going to be out of jobs if we move toward a biofuel economy. And people, you might, a lot of people might argue and say, oh, well, those people can go and get, get jobs in the biofuel sector instead. But I don't think that's going to be the case. I think biofuel will be employing people with already the skills and the trades needed that already exist. They're going to be employing farmers and things like that. 
um, people in agriculture, people in logging, they're not going to be employing the people who worked in the oil fields because they don't have the skills to transition toward that job sector. I think speaking of that, that kind of pertains to almost as we try to, it's not like I said, um, kind of was getting that first. It's not really an issue. It's definitely an issue that we need to be considering for sure in terms of um, keeping people employed, but it's not necessarily an issue that pertains solely to biofuels because any switch to um, to renewables is gonna take us away from the oil industry, right? And like, that is what our future is looking like. So, but that being said, I don't think, it's not gonna be something that happens overnight, right? Um, moving into like the economy side of it, um, another concern that I have with biofuels you might be able to address is that um, biofuels have the ability to corrode the insides of current engines and things like that and moving their way through current vehicles as the way like so say there's a bus fleet for example London Transit the LTC if we move to biofuels um, ethanol for example is known to corrode the internal parts of fuel containers is if we move to biofuel we're going to have to spend so much money and so much time refurbishing these fleets our cars um because they can't handle that much biofuel they weren't built for that right um yeah. so even like thinking about the ltc the amount of money they'd have to spend fixing the buses up to be able to handle more uh, i think the the ethanol content and fuel is like 10 percent right now say they moved it up to 30 the amount of money and that would take and the amount of time you know what i mean that would take a lot of money and who's going to pay for that I know a lot of the times it's not strictly biofuel, like biofuels use, it's like a mix. Is it the mm. case when biofuels use as a mix as well? Or that is was actually it less what I was planning to be your rebuttal. <laughs> um, to my understanding, when it gets to a certain concentration of ethanol, it corrodes the fuel containers. Um, right. And not just ethanol, various kinds of biofuel, just the way cars are currently built aren't meant to handle that going through its internal parts um, right. and so if we move toward being more reliant on biofuel i just worry about um, the amount of money the amount of time like does every single person who has a car would they have to figure you know what i mean like it just it could become such a huge thing and i know that yeah. the government and policymakers in general wouldn't impose that on people unless they had a way to handle it but even if the, their way to handle it is, okay, we're going to pay some taxes for a while to pay for this. Right. Is that a good use of money? If we know that biofuel as it stands, isn't necessarily the way to go. Like for instance, ethanol, like as we talked about with the environment um, in the process of growing seed to crop takes, what is it? Three times the amount of petroleum that it actually makes up for. So with that in mind, would it be financially feasible to op like optimize all these fleets, all these transportation, like, you know what I mean? It could just become huge. Yeah, yeah, so I think, speaking of that, I think maybe, like maybe we don't necessarily use biofuels as, because maybe we just don't use them in cars, you know what I mean? Like maybe we just, we'd better use them as um, to generate electricity kind of thing. Like biofuels don't necessarily have to be used within like internal combustion engines. They can be used within like centralized like factories, et cetera, where they're like burned and then they do carbon capture because yes, of course, like, you know, biofuels still give off carbon dioxide. So then carbon capture to take away some of those emissions just to backpedal really quick these um obviously all these need to be stored in batteries right and these batteries have limited capacity to hold this electricity so they can't just hold like endless amounts of electricity biofuels are a really good way so kind of then bring it back to the point i was about to make um just like that we need more energy for whatever reason it's really hot in summer we need more ac everyone's using ac um, we're going through a pandemic, everyone's inside, you know, we're all on our computers, et cetera. Like we're using more electricity. Biofuel then kicks into the energy grid when needed. And then that's where I think it's coming into play. 
in terms of like car usage, maybe biofuels aren't necessarily the way. There maybe they can maybe play like they can have a certain role. So maybe they there's a certain like mix that isn't um, detrimental to internal combustion engines. I think uh, I haven't looked into that, so I don't really. Um, I don't know like the logistics of that. I don't know if there is a mix. I'm going to assume there is some sort of way that they can be integrated that isn't going to, um, like crap me if I'm wrong, but like there is some sort of way they can be integrated at least to like a small extent because um, to not erode these yeah. engines. Um, so in that case, I think they have a role in internal combustion engines. However, I think in terms of like, long-term biofuel use it definitely would be towards just kind of like i said like supplement the grid when needed so we can pretty much completely move away from fossil fuels mm -hmm. because the way i think biofuels are going to be based off what we discussed today biofuels have a place but their place might now right might not be the best option i see ideal scenario switching to second third fourth generations and perhaps like you said um, using biofuels to supplement grid shortages and things like that, as opposed to using them as a fuel source for, yeah. for cars and vehicles and things like that. But I don't know, it'll be interesting to see like 10 years from now where we are. So I definitely, I would definitely agree with you that maybe biofuels right now aren't necessarily where they need to be. Um, I think with proper policy implementation and proper, you know, kind of like I said a few times through this conversation, um, a region specific focus for these biofuels, like specifically tailoring them to where they are most suitable. Um, so maybe, you know, maybe one country, maybe not even down to provincial level, but maybe just one country, they're really great for lumbering. They focus strictly on their lumbering byproducts and they develop some really great technology. And then maybe they share that with other countries. You know?